What's up guys, Garrett here. Welcome back to another video. Hope you're all having a great day, great week, so on and so forth. Uh, in the last video, we did the first two sections inside of main concepts, that is hello world and introducing JSX. In this video, we're gonna be doing section number three, which is rendering elements, which is a pretty short section, so it shouldn't be too long of a video, which is cool. Um, just to get everyone up to speed and so you can follow along. Basically, I just went and created a new React uh, project. So just go into your code editor, run create a React app, and then CD into that folder that it makes, and then you should be ready to go. Also run npm start, and then you should be ready to go um, here. Uh, the other thing to note, actually two things, is one, um, I'm going to try and get all these these projects up on GitHub as standalone repositories. So by the time you see this video, everything should be uh, up on GitHub. So you should be able to see that in the descriptions of all these videos, link to the repositories. Also, I'm not actually home right now. I'm away on a business trip. And I'm in the hotel room right now at the desk in my hotel room. So that's why, unfortunately, I don't have my secondary monitor here. So the uh, actual documentation is gonna have to be in front of us uh, on my laptop display. And so we'll just kind of be switching back and forth like so. Uh, so there might be some more cutting or something like that in the editing process because I don't wanna just have me reading the documentation, that would be kind of boring. So let's do some coding. So this is gonna be section number three, rendering elements. So basically uh, elements are the smallest building blocks of React. You might be familiar with components and we'll get to that in I think the next section it has there on section four, but elements are basically the same thing as HTML elements. You could have an H1 tag and that's an element. You could have a div and that's an element and that could have smaller elements within it. And obviously that kind of crosses the line into a component perhaps, but either way you could have elements are just single bits of HTML. The other thing to note is that elements are basically just objects and they're really, really inexpensive to make in terms of when we're coding things. So don't be afraid to make an element if you need to, to, to display the data that you're trying to display because they don't cost as much. Okay, so something else that is pretty important and I think that I mentioned this in the last video is that um, everything basically goes inside of the root element, which in our case is the div root element. So, excuse me, if we come over here and we inspect this, this will land us onto the header, which I guess this entire thing is a header. But I think we talked about this in the last video that everything gets put inside of the root element. Now, if you are integrating React into an already existing website, you can actually have as many root elements as you want, or as many, yeah, as many root elements as you want. And essentially what will happen is that they will each get their own node tree inside of your application. However, most times when you have a straight up React application, you just have one root element. And everything in there, so everything inside of the root element, that is what is controlled by React. So essentially this root element here, right here, as we can see, takes two arguments. The first one being this app. So that's the element you actually want to render to the DOM. And the other one is the root element itself. So that we're probably not gonna mess with and I would doubt you would either. But if we wanted to, we could do this here. So we will delete that. We can also comment this out because that'll give us a warning, not an error, just a warning. But if we do const element and we say, um, this is gonna be an H1 and it's going to say hello world inside like so. And then down here, we come here and say element, but we spell it correctly. Then what will happen is we now have this one element that is put inside of the React DOM inside of the root element, which is on the actual DOM itself. So React elements are immutable, which basically means that they cannot be changed. So once it's rendered to the screen, that's what it is. That's the content it holds. You can't change it. Currently, in this point of the documentation, the only way that we have to actually go and render it again and change the information, change what's in there, is by running this React DOM render right here. But essentially think of this as a frame in a movie. So you have one frame that has one still image 
of what's going on in that movie. And every time you want to update it, you have to run this React render. So what we could do here is create a function, function um, display time. Actually, before we do that, let's first demonstrate this, uh, the time. So we will put in here new date and then I think it's to local time string. I think, let's see here. Awesome. So that's the time currently where I am right now. But let's say that we wanted to update this the second every second, right? So we wanted to say 16, 17, 18, so on, right? The way that we could do this right now, at least at this point in the documentation, and we will learn how to update this, I think in the next couple of sections uh, or a couple of videos is we would create a function called set or display time, right? Whoops. And inside here, um, we would have this and then we would have this here. And what we would do is set an interval and basically say um, display time every 1000 milliseconds. Let's give that a shot. Doesn't work. If we remove this, does it work? Yes, it does. All right, so we can't execute it right there, I guess. We're just passing a reference to it, I think. So I'm actually calling it, we're passing a reference to it, and then it basically is uh, just calling that every, okay, cool. Got it. Uh, a lot of this for me, obviously, is learning the ins and outs of JavaScript. I come from, well, I do Angular stuff. I mean, I wouldn't, anyway. So yeah, so basically, this now works, right? Awesome. So what's cool here is that React is essentially calling that re React on render function. And it's basically we're just we're just passing in or actually no, every one second, we are calling our display time right here. Okay, which is then basically calling or setting this calling this and then that displays what we want every second to update the time. What's cool, however, is that React is good. It's really good. And it only actually updates what we need to update. So if I were to say, change this to a H3, and then put in another H1 here and say, hello, world, just like we had before, basically, we're going to get an error. Why do we get an error? Oh, obviously, because I forgot about the whole children issue. That's why. So if we do this, we're back to normal. And if we go here, we see that the same thing happens. We get this hello world, we get the time being displayed right here. However, what I want to show you guys is I want to show you what's actually being updated by React. Okay. Look at this here in my in my inspector in the console, not console, in the Chrome Dev Tools. Excuse me, in the Chrome Dev Tools, right here. Right, we see that the only thing that actually gets updated every second is the time itself, not the hello world here. Right, that's not being touched. And even inside of this H3, <coughs> excuse me, inside of this H3, not even this time colon is being updated. Right. So not even that's being updated. So React is really smart and it's really efficient in how it updates the DOM, right? Or how it updates, I guess, the virtual DOM, which I guess at some point updates the DOM, something like that. So really cool, really easy to update things inside of, inside of the page. Um, something important to note is that usually in an application, in a real production or just a real React application, you will only call this this method once. Okay. So this uh, right here, react on render will only get called once. And as far as I know, as far as I understand it, 
it generally will not be inside of a function like this. Now, obviously never say never, and I'm not an experienced React developer, so I very well may be wrong, but I don't believe that this will generally ever um, be inside of a function like this, which then gets called. Certainly not something that gets called on an interval like that. Um, but, but yeah, I think that this would generally be outside like that. Uh, and it would only get called once and then everything inside of your application would actually be updating the state of the application itself and we are going to see in like the next section or the section after that or something like that um, how to actually do this exact thing without running uh, react on render uh, on a set interval like that like we're doing right now all right guys thanks so much for watching i wasn't kidding when i said this was going to be a really short video because the section was super short i'm sorry that i had just the one screen um the next video or two might be the same way but it is what it is thanks so much for watching guys if you like the video give me a thumbs up comment down below if you think that i can make these videos better i would love to hear your feedback because i don't exactly know how to present this information um because i'm reading it off of the documentation as opposed to like me already knowing it and then presenting it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, either way, like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Peace.